This matter arose because some false believers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. We did not give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. As for those who were held in high esteem, whatever they were makes no difference to me. God does not show favoritism. They added nothing to my message. On the contrary, they recognized that I had been entrusted with the task of preaching the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been to the circumcised. For God, who was at work in Peter as an apostle to the circumcised, was also at work in me as an apostle to the Gentiles. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Stuart. Just dropping things, don't mind me. <laughs> Let's pray, shall we? Father, would you speak this morning to each and every one of us by your Holy Spirit? And may the ears of our hearts be open to hear his voice. And we pray this for the glory of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Well, I feel like as people, we often go, I know this is true for myself, we often go between two extremes. One of acting like we are the most important person in the room. Well, at least perhaps our um, behavior shows that. Maybe we're not consciously thinking that. And the other extreme of struggling to believe that we're worthy of anything good. Now, I think this is very true as well for the way in which we think about hearing from God. And we're going to be looking at the um, Apostle Paul um, it, from the Bible and uh, how he heard from God in many different ways. But as Peter's already alluded to, it was a rather surprising choice from God, to put it mildly. Now, Paul began his life as the self-important one dictating what people should believe and punishing them severely if they didn't conform, even to the point of having believers in Jesus put into prison, even to the point of supporting their execution. If anyone was an enemy of Jesus and of the Holy Spirit, at that point in his life, it was Paul. But then we see the other extreme as well. The Paul who wrote the book of Ephesians called himself this, the least of all believers. He said, even though I am the least of all believers. So wondering about us, when it comes to hearing from God, how do we feel? Do we feel like a mega important person with a direct line to God. I hear from God more than any of you. Well, I doubt that too many of you feel in that position this morning. Or perhaps, and I'm wondering if maybe this is how more of us feel, like we wonder why God would even bother with speaking to me. Now, Paul received life-changing and world-changing revelations from God. How and why and what can, you know, little old me learn from such a great person in the history of the Bible? Well, God chose to speak to, to Paul or Saul as he was called then. Saul didn't have a choice about this matter really because he was confronted directly by the risen Jesus and defeated by his glory in a way. The road to Damascus is one of the most dramatic instances of God speaking. It's a divine confrontation, and Saul was defeated by the very one he was opposing, Jesus Christ, whom he discovers in meeting him to be Lord of all. So Paul's calling was inescapable. Now, um, 
if my children, sorry, they're here this morning, they uh, have to um, endure me uh, referring to them in the sermon. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, if my children do something that I don't think is the right thing to be doing, I make sure I get their attention. If you know what I mean, I might raise my voice a bit and, uh, yeah, you know what I mean, don't you? I want them to, have, to, to give me attention so that I can give them the message that I want to get through to them so that then they can change what they're doing in the way I want them to. So it's very similar in a way how God speaks to, to Saul. He gets his attention, certainly, doesn't he? The, the blinding light and his presence on the road to Damascus and the message he receives certainly changes him completely from the one who persecuted the Christians to the one who is speaking for Jesus boldly across the known world at the time. God, in his sovereignty, chose Saul, renaming him Paul, that's how we know him um, generally, to reveal his glory to those who are not part of his chosen nation of Israel. God was doing a new thing. But not only this encounter, this is just one of many encounters that um, Paul has where he hears from God. Uh, throughout the second half of Acts and through Paul's letters, we see God speaks again and again and again to and through Paul. Um, he was able to write, although it doesn't survive um, today for us to read it, an account of Jesus' life um, that was fully accurate and accepted as true by the other apostles who, who themselves had witnessed Jesus' life, death, death, and the resurrection, but yet Paul had not himself witnessed these things, and he hadn't spoken to the apostles to have them pass this message on to him. He had received it himself through revelation directly from God. Isn't that amazing? And not only this, but again and again we see Paul speaking into people's lives with the authority of the Holy Spirit. Every step of the way, Paul is following the voice of God. For example, in the book of, of Acts, and I'm sorry, I've omitted to write down the chapter to number in my notes, um, but shout it out if you know it. Um, Paul and his companions are prevented from entering into Bithynia in Asia by the Holy Spirit and instead are told in a vision to go into Macedonia. And Paul listens to this and obeys it. In every action of Paul, he wanted to follow what God was saying. In every word he wrote in his letters, he wanted to give the message the Holy Spirit was giving him. So we can see how God was speaking lots, Paul was listening lots, and he was taking action. And Paul's encounters show with Jesus show us just how clearly and accurately Jesus can and does speak in this era of history after he has ascended to heaven. And we mustn't think of this form of revelation, of God revealing himself, that is, um, as a lesser form. We mustn't think of this as a lesser form of revelation to what the apostles had in knowing Jesus during his public ministry and seeing the resurrection with their own eyes. Paul heard just as accurately as they did. And the supernatural encounter he had was just as accurate in passing on the message that God wanted Paul to speak, as it was for Peter, John, etc., to stand in the presence of Jesus and to listen to him teach. So the point is this. We can have confidence that if God wants us to hear from him, to have a message from him, to know what he is saying, that he is powerful enough to do it, that it's not an inferior form of hearing from him. And he said it was better, Jesus said it was better that he went away because then the Holy Spirit would come. And perhaps you're in this position today that I've already mentioned. Are you worried, perhaps, that you're just not good enough or important enough or don't have enough faith for God to speak to you? Now, if anyone perhaps would or should have been disqualified from hearing God speak to him, perhaps it was Paul, him who opposed the risen Jesus. 
but in God's sovereignty, he chose him and revealed himself to him. Now, I think sometimes we have, we set the bar very low in our faith because we think that God somehow thinks we're disqualified from knowing him, from hearing him, from seeing him working in our life. But that's not true. Uh, I may have told you this story before, um, but bear with me, because I think it's relevant to this situation. When um, Lauren and I, and um, we had two children then, um, Elijah and Sarah, came back to the UK, and we really thought when we looked at all the information that Lauren and I didn't actually qualify for the visa I needed to get for Lauren to come into the country. We looked at it, it just didn't look possible. You know, um, I didn't earn enough money, I didn't have a job lined up at the time. We didn't, we looked at the rules, we thought, didn't qualify. Um, so it would have been easy for me to say, well, perhaps um, what God was saying when I felt like he was telling us to come back to the UK, perhaps that was wrong, perhaps I misheard. Um, should I even bother putting in the paperwork? The thing was, um, I knew that God wanted us to come back to the UK. And, well, in fact, I'm probably the only person ever to have uh, emigrated uh, to New Zealand to ever um, want to pay money to come back again. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I did apply, and God made a way. I can tell you more details of the story if you want to speak to me afterwards, but the point is God made a way. He made it possible. He lined up the right things to happen for it. So I felt disqualified, but actually, God chose that it would happen, and he made it happen. It's not dependent on us, it's dependent on him. If you have a, you may feel you don't qualify for God to speak into your life, but if you have a heart that loves God, loves Jesus, and is seeking after him in faith, then God can choose to step in and do anything he wants because it's not based on our goodness, but it is based on his, and it is based on his view of us because of our love for Jesus, not of our own view of ourselves. So, myself, I want to begin and carry on on that journey of hearing from God, not because... I think I am particularly important in, um, in the world's eyes. I don't think that I'm particularly special in any way, but because I believe he wants to speak to me because I have a relationship with him. Now, we've thought about several types of hearing from God um, throughout this uh, sermon series that we've had and how we can hear from God more and I just want to bring together um, some thoughts, final thoughts um, on this sermon series together um, and leave you with a few things to think about. Um, the first is this, every Christian does hear from God. All of us have a story. Um, I've just given you a little part of um, my, my story of my relationship with Jesus. Um, and all of you have a story of how he has called you to love him and to have a relationship with him and to turn to him in, in repentance and faith. That, that is a story that every Christian can say is their own story. And it, that is a mark of God speaking, revealing himself to you. You would not have faith in him if he had not first revealed himself to you. So every Christian has already heard from God and can continue to do so whether that is with him speaking directly to us, which, as we suggest, is, is perhaps more rare, or whether it's through reading his word and the Spirit confirming the truth of what is said in the word and applying it to our hearts, or through others. Now, that is a mark of intimacy with Jesus, of our relationship with him, that he continues to speak. Now, we've thought a bit about supernatural gifts as well and that they are part of God's plan for the church continuing today. Now, God pours out his gifts on those who earnestly seek him, but not every Christian has every gift. 
and the gifts of the building up of the church. So taking today's passage, when God revealed himself to Paul, it wasn't to make Paul feel really, really special and have a nice glow about him and be really happy. It was because he had chosen Paul to be an instrument of his glory in the world. And it's the same for us today. If he chooses to do something in our lives, whether it is for his glory, yes, it, it is good for us. Um, it, it can be amazing for us. Um, it does give us amazing stories to tell other people, but it is for his glory. So I want to leave you with these things. Expect more, believe for more, earnestly seek him for more, grow near to him in intimacy. As in every relationship, the greater the intimacy, the better the communication. And don't be discouraged if you feel like you're in the wilderness right now, as the wilderness is the greatest place of equipping, the greatest school of ministry that there is. God forms you in the trials of your life even more than in the everyday. And remember, it's all about Jesus and his glory. There's no room for pride. So if you go around, like I um, introduced uh, the, the, the sermon saying, oh, I hear from God so much, um, I'm, I'm an amazing prophet, I have all these spiritual gifts. Well, that's the, exactly the type of person that God perhaps might not want to trust his, his presence and his glory with so much because they're not giving him the glory for it. They're giving themselves the glory for it. God is jealous for his glory. God chose Paul because it would give him the most glory, exactly because he was most disqualified in some ways. So however inadequate you may feel, that is no barrier to God. He can do anything, so long as your heart is surrendered to his will. So as we finish, um, we're going to have a time of worship. Um, we're going to begin with a song, Lord, You Have My Heart. And I want to suggest this morning that we sing this as a prayer of devotion, asking Jesus to show us his heart and to speak into our lives as we sacrifice our own lives and priorities to him. So would you stand if you're able as we spend some time worshipping our Lord and Saviour who speaks today. Amen. <laughs>